great to see so many people turn up for Ben's talk. Ben's gonna talk us through his adventures in acquiring a water tower. So please give it up for Ben Fitzgerald O'Connor. Oh. Thanks. So yeah, so I'm Ben, and this is my talk about uh, yeah, 101 hacks for late Soviet water towers. So um, yeah, okay, obligatory speaker bio slide. Um, what you need to know about me? Um, yeah, I'm half Latvian, so hence um, interest in Latvia and so forth. And actually, the reason reason for the unicorn here as well on the slide is because when I was growing up in England, um, the Soviet the, the Iron Curtain was still in full effect, and Latvia and places like that were seen as being sort of forbidden, and anywhere that's sort of forbidden is therefore of interest. You hear about sort of communism and everyone being equal and all these wonderful things. And it was like sort of magical fairyland you can never visit. And sort of in your head you sort of have that view. Um, so I was, yeah, I'm proud to say I was a staunch communist until I was about 10. <laughs> and then you discover that the system isn't quite as good as it's meant to be and uh, everything collapsed. And anyway, so yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so on the, on the MTBI, no, MBTI, um, indicator I come out as being an INFP. If if you don't, th there's the like Myers Briggs type indicator, which is personalities and things. And if you don't know about that, Google. There's a website, 16personalities.com, and you can find out what your own personality is. And you um, sort of. So I'm more an introvert, and so public speaking is not not something I enjoy. But it's a good challenge, and I need to get better at it. So hence I'm here. Um, and, um, but yeah, have a look at that and actually find out more about yourself and um, sort of things resonate and we're all different, so it's good to understand yourself. But I like ideas and all that. So yeah, um, so a couple of years ago, um, or three years ago now, I was, I was 40. And um, so actually, I guess, what, 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 what are the demographics of everyone here? Who's, who's over 40, for example? So, oh, okay, so about two thirds. And uh, so two thirds of you will... Uh, Recognise everything I'm going to talk about, and the other third will have this to come, so prepare yourself. <laughs> so, anyway, um, when I was 40, um, I absolutely did not have a midlife crisis. Um, yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> but I did spy a Spitfire, that was great fun, and I did hurtle down the crest of run, and uh, sort of came off and did that at Samaritz and stuff, and I slightly accidentally became the proud custodian of a fine Latvian water tower. <laughs> and this is the story of that bit. So, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, Latvia. So, I don't know about the Dutch and what you think of Latvia, but um, the picture a lot of people in the UK have is, is I said it used to be like this, it's somewhere you go on stag do's and have raucous parties and there's the beer bus here that people ride around and get drunk. I imagine, do you have those in Amsterdam? Yes. Yeah, okay, so it's like staying at home. So, Latvia is just like Amsterdam. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, okay, well, that's good to know. So cool, and yeah, and you know, Illinois stag dudes, you've got shooting, shooting rifles and AK-47s and all that good stuff that you can do down there, um, and parties and lasers. There you are. So actually, maybe Latvia is right, just like uh, like Holland. <laughs> but actually, you know, apart from the parties, um, the side of Latvia that people don't see commonly when going over there that sort of makes me cringe and want to apologise every time I arrive is is the deeper, the quieter side of the country, and and actually, yeah, if you're if you're sort of introvert or whatever, it's it's a great place to be. And actually, where else could you get a bus to literally a place called Solitude? Uh, so that is a suburb of Latvia. And um, and actually, the whole introvert thing is is quite Latvian as well. So last year they had the Latvian um, the or the the book fair, the London book fair, and Latvia had this whole theme of I am introvert, which was a sort of trending hashtag. And they had these cartoons done for it. And there's there's one lap, um, one of the cartoons, and I realise I I don't know it sort of makes sense to me because people ask you things and then you sort of think about things and overthink about things and think about that again, and then eventually they might get an answer by which time they're probably gone. <laughs> so one of my resolutions this year has been to communicate better, and and actually I've learned I tend to be try and be a bit of a perfectionist about stuff, and then you never deliver anything. So it's better to get you know something out and 90% of the message and not perfect. And yeah, um, something I heard the other day was a. An idiot that takes action is going to be more successful than someone who's you know, a perfectionist that never does anything. And that's very true, but it's very hard to go against your nature, but it's something you have to do. Um, so yeah, they, they did these cartoons. And actually, interestingly, this book of cartoons for hashtag I'm introvert, you can't buy them online. So you've actually got to go to a particular bookshop to buy them or get an extroverted friend to go for, for you. And uh, so uh, yeah, they, they, they get a few rings wrong over there. Um, but actually, yeah, so... 
um, <clears throat> a few things, crazy Dutch hackers versus Latvia. Um, in, uh, yeah, so Hackspace, we have rule zero of don't be on fire. Latvians love to challenge that. And um, so there's a national tradition of jumping over fires in you know, sort of summer, midsummers, and so forth, the uh, Yarni festival. And um, yeah, don't get burned to death, it's probably the rule over there. Or, um, or get burned to death once. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Um, and again, beer is a big thing over there. The Latvian beer is uh, very, 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 very good indeed. Money back if you don't like it. And actually, some teach you a little bit of Latvian. If you say, Ludzo divas alus, that's please two beers. And uh, for a long time, that was about all I could say in Latvian. I've been learning a little bit, but it uh, take, takes a while. So, yeah, there's, there's good things there. Um, and actually, yeah, so Latvia as well, if you're into technology and stuff... Um, so one of the claims to fame for the country, and I have the mug to prove it, is they have, the fi or have or had the fifth fastest internet in the world. And, um, yeah, quite how those stats came up with, I'm not sure, but uh, everyone's got five nowadays. And actually, on the other side of the same mug is, uh, they're saying, uh, the most, most popular product in Latvia is the potato. So I wonder who was uh, doing a survey there of, oh, what's your favourite product? Oh, it's got to be the potato. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, there we are. But no, it's, it's a great place to go. And a, a unicorn again, because actually um, technology in the Baltics is very strong. And actually, compared to Silicon Valley, um, Estonia, so just, just the north, they have more unicorns per head of population, as in you know, companies valued at over a billion dollars, um, than anywhere else in the world, so including Silicon Valley so, or, or on the States. So, yeah. Um, and again, yeah, Latvia versus versus here. I think if you're into radio, you get, you've got maximum 400 watts here. I know that's the case in, in England. Whereas over there, you can transmit with a kilowatt and uh, sort of go to, go to town and talk to the world. So, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, cool. Um, but actually, yeah, with properties and stuff, I mean, England is top of property bubble. It's probably all about to fall apart and about time too. And I'm guessing living here is not too cheap either, is it? But, uh, or nowhere is. So, and certainly you hear about people living, again, in Silicon Valley in trucks and, you know, caravans and sleeping in their cars because nobody can afford anywhere to live. So, yeah, um, and actually I, I had a look out of interest to see what, so £85,000, that's like €100,000, will, will, for example, buy you this very fine single garage in sort of outside London even, um, in sort of Twickenham, west of London. So that's, that's, what, that's the value you get in the UK. Um, so... <laughs> You know, the affordable house is generally affordable if you're a sheikh. Um, whereas, um, actually, yeah, sometimes, I don't, yeah, I'm half Latvian and work very hard and run an IT company. And the grass is always greener and whatever you do, that's a fact of life. And I, I really like the fact that, it's like, I don't know, so 150 years ago, if, if you lived in the Baltics, uh, it was all a bit backward compared to now and you know so much has changed people didn't even have um, surnames 150 years ago but everything in your life would have come from within about 20 kilometers so the you know the wood that your house is made of the the, you know, the horse you ride the saddle for your horse the wife you marry everything um, so it's all very very sustainable um, they didn't have dentistry and modern things that we do enjoy <laughs> that I wouldn't want to give up but um, I sort of sometimes hanker after, you know, instead of being on a keyboard, just sort of living off the land and living this sustainable, good life. And, um, yeah, there's a website in Latvia, uh, ss.com. And so it's not the Nazi SS, but uh, it basically translates to small ads. So it's the equivalent of eBay or Craigslist or something. And um, this, this website is uh, particularly addictive. So um, they list, have listings for everything. And sometimes I sit at my desk and think, oh... Let's have a look and see what there is, and you know, could I you sort of daydream for a minute about uh, getting a farm over there or something? And um, yeah, so as you can see, this is all in Latvian. But uh, you've got some images that tell you about uh, what things are, and uh, you can then uh, use Google Translate, and it turns it into English. So it's sort of machine translation, but it's actually pretty good, and you can browse through. So actually, ha yeah, have a look at the website, and it's quite down a rabbit hole. So yeah, sometimes I used to or do occasionally sit at my desk, have a look, and yeah, sort of see what properties are around. And yeah, you can sort of go into there. So whereas we've got the English property, so yeah, you can go into uh, the property section. Oh, here's a, here's a good one. Um, with, um, yeah, this is machine translation. So actually this one here, um, Realtors uh, Pakalium. So 
sort of Latvian pronunciations rubbish. Um, this one I thought was quite good. When you translate that, it becomes literally uh, thieves' services. So who says machine translations? Uh, no good. That's uh, that's Freudianly good. Uh, yeah. That's uh, so anyway. Um, but I, I was browsing one day and I I came uh, across the auction section and everyone likes a bargain, don't they? So I thought, oh, I'll have a look and see what there is. And um, and I and and actually generally in in Latvia. Um, Property is pretty reasonable. So actually, this this was one I found as well. Um, just an example of value. So eighty-five thousand or hundred thousand euros gets you the single garage in London or outside London. Um, and this property was basically it is um, eighteen a block of eighteen apartments with a hectare of land um, in Oluxne, which is a really nice area. And the whole thing you can buy the whole eighteen for ten thousand euros. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's what, 500 euros each? And, um, <laughs> you know, you can't go wrong at that, can you? So, um, I mean, but then what would you do with it? But, uh, but again, you couldn't go wrong, so, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's almost illegal not to buy stuff like that, isn't it? But anyway, so, yeah. Um, so I'd like to have a look and see what there is. And I came across a listing um, for... This fine water tower, which is uh, in the in the sort of seaside area of uh, Latvia, and um, and the it, the auction was to actually be on the 20th of May, and that's the day of my birthday. So I thought, oh, okay, what should I do on my birthday? I'll go to Latvia for the day. You can do that. You early start, late back, but you can do it for the day. And phew, seemed an interesting property, but also. I thought to learn about the auction system, and we've all got carried away on eBay, haven't we, and bought a few things for a bit too much. Do you think, how did I pay that? But, you know, it's all good fun. Um, so here I thought, okay, I'm going to be strategic, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll learn about the property process. So here's something that, interesting, interesting water tower with a very run-down shed at the bottom. <laughs> but there's no way I'd get that, because... Telephone company's going to buy it, put masks at the top, they'll pay 100,000 euros or something. They've got deep pockets, I haven't. So actually, zero risk of, of um, yeah, bankrupting myself with auction fever. And, you know, and how, would a, how would an auction work abroad? Um, so it's like you, know, you see Japanese car auctions, and you know, would you understand the language if you don't speak it? And actually, it's a tricky language to learn Latvian, mainly because everyone speaks such good English. It's a bit like probably learning Dutch is similar in that everyone, you all speak. Brilliant English, so my Dutch is nil. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so it was on day of my day of the birthday, so I registered for it, and I thought, yeah, to learn about it. So when something I did want came up, I'd know the process and be a bit briefed. So yeah, so I did that, um, and actually, yeah, a bit more detail of it. So it's this particular thing, they give you the particulars, and it's it's got five hundred and ten square meters of land, and and the tower is forty meters high and various other details, and 40 cubic metres of water it will hold, or does hold, and not in very good technical condition. So anyway, yes, yeah, so I registered for it, filled in the forms, translated them, and sort of sent deposit off and stuff like that. Um, and, um, and that was a couple of months before. So, um, so while I was waiting, um, I sort of Googled it out of interest, because actually I'm, I'm no good. Some people, architects and designers, they could look at this room and say, how many, you know, if it's 100 square metres or what. I can't do that. I have no, no concept of that at all. Um, and um, so I, if you look up what is 40 metres high in this case, um, so I found, yeah, the Statue of Christ in Rio de Janeiro is 40 metres high. I've never been there, so I can't really relate to it. But I also found that, hey, the American Space Shuttle is 40 metres long. And um, I've seen those, and that's pretty big. And I sort of, in my head, I sort of thought, oh, actually, that's 40 metres high, so you could turn one round and actually prop it next to the, uh, next to the water tower. And uh, actually, the Russians, they were on eBay. Well, I don't know if it was eBay, but another auction site. They, they built a space shuttle, um, which looks strangely like this one. It's about a bit like how they had Concorde ski, which strangely looked like Concorde, but crashed a lot more. <laughs> so, um, they, bought, they built a space shuttle, and they called it the Buran. And apparently, it did fly, uh, unmanned, and then landed or something which may be propaganda or may have done, but um, it got discontinued and the factory was still in the Ukraine. And, um, yeah, they actually tried to sell, oh, sell, sell some of these. And um, I thought, yeah, that'd be a pretty cool thing to have, you know, your own spaceship. Who doesn't want their own spaceship? You know, so uh, everyone's been very quiet. You know, so, yeah, you've got to have a big garden for a spaceship. But, uh, 
Anyway, but yeah, so I, I had that picture in my head and, and all that. So anyway, so yeah, so the day, day of the auction came and I, I uh, yeah, flew out for the day, sort of expecting to pop in and then have a nice lunch and go to a gallery and wander around the park and go home. And um, yeah, it was interesting because I, I, yeah, I flew over and got there. <clears throat> and they, they, they said, said what I was there for, and they greeted me and they said, Ah, oh, Miss Fitzgerald, you're the only person who's registered for the water tower. <laughs> so uh, five euros and it's yours. And uh, we were wondering who's bought this, and, uh, and what are you going to do with it? And because I had totally expected just to be there to observe, and it sort of took me back a bit. Um, so I was sort of thinking back to that space shuttle thing, so I said, Well, uh, well could, I, could I put a brand next to it? And um, if you ask that question in England, it'd be, well, no, Section 6 of the Planning Act. You know, they're very dry English planners. Um, but Latvians said, well, it's yours. You can do what you want with it. So, uh, OK, great. So a little bit of paperwork later and, uh, yeah, sort of five euros paid. Um, jumped, in a <laughs> jumped in a taxi and uh, went out to have a look, at, um, a look at the tower, which is sort of half an hour outside Riga. And uh, with a nice for sale sign on the bottom, and I mean the 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 building next to it in the in the photo here that that's a warehouse which is pretty high in itself, um, and it's quite hard to get a actual sense of scale. But I hadn't hadn't visited it before, and so yeah, this was the first visit and had a look to see what there was. Was that part of the, of the, the package as well? Uh, no, so the the shed at the bottom oh. was part of the package, um, which which actually. <laughs> Appealed as much as the uh, the tower, but um, but yeah. So so I went went to explore a little bit and uh, sort of went went in, had a look, and, and actually climbed climbed up to the top. And it's all ladders and levels inside. Um, and I was expecting. I mean, they they told me actually. I'd ask, can, or can you go up? And they said, no, it's been pulled down. But you can you yeah. climb in and go up all the ladders, and it's sort of a bit dark and damp. But you you go up to the top. So anyway, onwards and upwards, as uh, B. Watts say. So actually, B. Watts is the British Water Tower Appreciation Society, um, and uh, of which of which I've since become a member. Interestingly, if you if you want to become a member of the uh, British Water Tower Appreciation Society, and I'd encourage you all to do so, um, there's a five pound membership fee. But uh, if you're the, the owner of a tower, you get free membership. So my five euros <laughs> is uh, you know quids in already. Uh, so yeah. So anyway, went went to explore the tower, um, and actually, yeah, that's the view from the top. And actually, the down uh, down at the bottom there, you've got a, a sort of lamp post. And if you think again, we we look up normally to lamp posts and you know the street lights, and this is looking down on them. And yeah, it's a beautiful place next to the lakes and all that. Um, but yeah, the top is very scary. <laughs> Which uh, yeah, some of my cousins are work on wind farms and things. They're perfectly happy up there, but. Not me. So anyway, went up to explore and uh, yeah, have a look around, and yeah, it was a nice day. And uh, yeah, so I had to scramble down, have a look in the shed, and head back. But uh, and actually, the shed inside they had a portrait of Stalin um, in the back of it, and the the papers from the guards who'd been guarding the site, which had you know since been turned down, and sort of see, see some of the history of it. But it's uh, that's proper. Proper shed that one, nicely insulated and stuff. So yeah, that was um, sort of exploring and finding it. Um, so <laughs> that brought me on next to this question of well, what to do with the tower? Um, and yeah, there's a sort of British tradition for making lists and things, and I like ideas and exploring stuff. So, but well, we've got to have a list of 101 things to do with the water tower. And actually, from going up to the top, um, discover that yeah, we'll actually have to have a second list as well, which is going to be 101 ways to kill yourself on the tower. Um, <laughs> which is probably an equally long list. So, yeah, um, and actually, yeah, on that front, the, uh, yeah, the British Water Tower Appreciation Society, they have, they have very good language on this, and um, on their website, they, they basically say that they encourage the responsible enjoyment of water towers, which is best done from a distance. And um, towers can have various risks, of death by falling, um, death by things falling on you, disease-carrying vermin, open pits with sludge and asbestos and live wiring, lots of other hassles, uh, sort of hazards. And yeah, it sort of sobers you a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, um, oh yeah, actually from from visiting, 
one of the things we did, uh, uh, yeah, I saw that actually the door, so the entrance is down here at the bottom. And um, yeah, sort of being an IT person, you've got to have policies for everything, haven't you? Especially in you know any any organisation that's not tiny. Uh, we thought, well, actually, Latvians are very welcoming, so we'll have an open door policy. And given that we don't have a door, that's uh, <laughs> that seemed fitting. So uh, that was that was one of the first decisions. But yeah, so and actually, I've talked to the water tower a lot, and um, yeah, they're keen to do a tour of uh, water towers in Latvia and stuff, and they're. So many different designs um, of towers that you come across. Um, but yeah, so I sort of had to go back that day and then organised a bit of a longer trip to come and explore the tower a bit more and learn, learn more about it. So went back soon after that and um, did more of a sort of survey to look at the details and, and all that. Um, and um, yeah, one of the things we did was clear up around the tower. And um, so, yeah, that's sort of some of the stuff I cleared up. And uh, so, yeah, another thing we learned about the tower is a great party venue. And why wasn't I invited to those parties? But, uh, but again, um, it made me realise that, um, yeah, sort of finding various bottles in the tower. Um, yeah, I mean, health and safety is a little bit behind where it is here. Um, but if someone was to get drunk and fall down, you, you basically have about 1.6 seconds to say goodbye to the world uh, while you... Uh, Descend to your to your doom, but I'd feel a bit bad, and there's probably lots of paperwork if somebody did fall off. So I thought, yeah, I've got to have a door. So <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, so Yermola, where the tower is, is is on the seaside in Latvia, and it's it's a beautiful place, um, and it's uh, it's been likened to Miami Beach. And in summer, you you know, yeah, it's very shallow. You go swimming, and actually in winter, people ski on the beach, and I normally associate beaches with you know people sunbathing and swimming and all that, and seeing people skiing on a beach um, just sort of jarred the first time you see it. But actually, you know, when when the sea is frozen, you can walk on the sea and ski along the beach. Why not? It's uh, it's just one of those things. It's a bit like um, oh yeah, you can tell you can tell what country or which part of the world people come from from how they eat a banana, for example. So actually, here, how, how do you how do you eat a banana? I should have brought one with me. Um, do you? So we in in England we take the stalk um, and peel it back, and then eat the banana. Is that the same here? Oh, so you're like a monkey, <laughs> uh, or like a Russian, or an Eastern European. In Eastern Europe, it, we yeah. So most people in Western Europe take the stalk down, whereas in in Eastern Europe they do it the other way. So you sort of hold the stalk as more sensible to hold, and you peel the other way. And it's one of those things that if you've been told, yeah, you know, it's just the way everyone does something. You don't question it. And it sort of makes you think, oh, actually, yeah, why do we do it that way? And it's just sort of things that people always do, that people carry on with. So anyway, so I digress. But So yeah, nice, nice area. And actually, once you, once you get interested in water towers, for example, you start seeing them everywhere. So it's a bit like I, I used to do cinema projection and on the old film projectors. And when you have to change from one projector to the other, you've got a little dot that flashes up for Q to get ready, and then two seconds later it's change for switching over. And if it's all right, then the film carries on and it's perfect. And someone watching the film might just notice a little flash for a hair on the film or something. But if you've done projection, you know to look for those dots, and you forever see them and you can't not see them. Um, so once you, once you start noticing things, you start seeing them everywhere. And that's, it's, it's interesting, the designs of towers. So these are three within two miles or five, yeah, a few kilometres of where, where my tower is um, from different designs and different eras. And apparently they're typically an architect's first project will be, um, in many cases, a water tower because they're relatively simple utilitarian buildings, but it's a way that you can actually express your individuality as well. So, yeah, so now one of my brothers and people fly around the world, they uh, they take pictures of water towers and send them, send them to me. It's a bit like, I don't know if you tell someone you're a Harry Potter fan or something, you will get, you know, you're going to end up with a collection of 61s or something, because everyone knows you like that and they send you stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been interesting learning about that. And, in, yeah, so, interesting, right, right opposite the tower, the uh, Latvian government very kindly have also built a little park with... Um, uh, sort of picnicking facilities and people swim in the lake and it's actually very nice. So uh, yeah, thank, thanks for that. So yeah, the design and the construction of the tower. So one of the things um, in understanding the tower and thinking, what can I do with this? First of all, is was working out. Well, actually, how is it built? Is it going to fall down and and so forth? So 
I went to do a survey. An interesting thing. So you can see here the design of these and a lot of the Soviet system. If you look at Soviet aircraft, Soviet, all sorts of things like that, they're designed to be built by unskilled labour. Um, so it's a bit like the Yak aircraft and stuff. They're designed to be serviced by conscripts. So with simple tools and to fly from fields and things. And in the same way, these towers, they're modular, so they precast concrete, and which are basically brought sites stacked and have rebar and stuff to build them. And you can make different configurations out of them. So you can have different numbers of, sort of the balls up at the top and different numbers of sections for how high you want it to be and so forth. And this design is a very popular Latvian design. And you see them all over the country with one ball, with two balls, with sometimes balls back to back, sometimes three balls facing each other, and all sorts of different combinations. Um, but it's sort of yeah, interesting, sort of mass produced design. So, yeah, so inside basically each module has these bits of rebar, um, which are, they are thick, thick steel, um, very big. And, you, and the joins between them are. Effectively, it's constructed the same way the railways are constructed. So effectively, they, they put a, um, a tool around and pour the liquid metal in, and it sort of makes a very permanent join. And it's very, very strong. And there are more at the bottom. They sort of thin out up at the top, but uh, it basically it's held, held together with steel. So yeah, exploring up inside the tower, you've got a number of ladders and levels, and you sort of climb up and change level, climb up, change level, climb up. Um, it's quite quite fun going up to the top. Um, and you have to. I was good to pause halfway to get your breath and stuff, but because uh, it is, yeah, it's basically twelve stories of ladders. So um, yeah. Anyway, so going going up, you you then get to the top section where you've got the balls and you've got one more ladder to get to the very top, and you can then uh, yeah reach there. This this is the detail of the bottom of the um, of the lower tank, and there are two two pipes. Um, so there's there's the main pipe, which is the down pipe, which would be just wide enough for a person to fit in, I think. And you don't want to get caught in that because that would, yeah, that would be hard to get out of <laughs> if you if you fell in, um, slipped to the bottom, and all that. Um, and the the smaller pipe um, over here is um, that's been sort of either cut off or may not have ever been connected. So the water would have been pumped up. Yeah, from the small pipe all the time and trickle just with gravity over the top. Very, very simple design. And then fill up, and then the big tank takes it out for when it's needed for the industrial park next door. So, yeah, they're sort of very simple things. And actually, water towers, I've learned, they're not about storing water so much, because that's what everyone thinks they're for. They're more about balancing pressure and, and so forth. So, um, yeah, sort of storing it up for when it's needed. And yeah, this particular tower, um, I found they've all got plates on, and this this one was built in eighty eighty seven. Yes, nineteen eighty seven. So it's about thirty years old now. Um, so it would have been a fairly fairly late one before. Was it ninety two? The curtain came down or about that. So eighty nine. Uh, okay, yeah. So um, yeah. So up at the top, sort of exploring up there, you you sort of climb to the top from the top of that last ladder, look peer out over the top. And um, yeah, you've got a there's a a barrier, but um, <laughs> it's uh, there's no non-slip for surface. There's uh, yeah, and if you fell against the barrier, it may hold you, it may not. <laughs> um, no warranties on that, but it uh, yeah, that it, uh, it scares me shitless. <laughs> so, um, which which is good for self-preservation, I guess. Um, but yeah, you, you sort of explore off at the top, and actually looking down into the big tank, there's a ladder in there as well, so you can go down to clean it and climb into it. Um, I haven't actually ventured down into it yet, because I'm not quite sure how secure the steel is, because up there nobody can hear you scream. So, actually, and, um, yeah, and actually from up at the top, um, last time I was there, um, I was standing up at the top, and yeah, one of the things we did was run a radio station from the top, a sort of amateur station, put a huge long wire antenna out, and that was great. Um, and I lugged everything to the top. and uh, But I was standing up at the top, and um, around the corner came these fire engines and police and stuff with their um, sirens wailing and stuff. And I was thinking, oh, has someone seen me? And, um, you know, wonder if I'm going to jump or something like that. And actually they hadn't. Someone, unfortunately, had drowned in the lake. But um, when you're up there, you're you're sort of tiny, 
nobody sees you because they just see the tower. You're almost invisible up at the top. So if you if you got in trouble up there, you'd be pretty stuck. So anyway, um, so after having sort of learnt about the tower and checking it's stable and understanding it all, I've sort of done a bit of research and looking into um, yeah, looking into how the design came about and things like that. And I've I've learnt the story about this. Um, I'm not sure quite how true it is, but uh, we'll, we'll see. So apparently, <coughs> back in sort of late 70s or maybe early 80s, they, I mean, probably late 70s anyway, they, they command economy, they had a sort of committee meeting, and as with all these things, they they said, oh, yeah, we, we need a new design of water tower to with these functional specifications to you know, serve the needs of the economy for the next so many years, and it has to have these parameters and <laughs> all those details. <laughs> um, and, you know, sort of typical design bureau stuff. And with any meeting, um, yeah, one of the things I've found, um, if you've got a boring meeting, is there do seem to be a few universal truths. And um, so, uh, allegedly, there was um, a young engineer at the back who was a bit bored by this, and he was sort of doodling away. And um, so, yeah. Any guesses for what the single most popular part of male anatomy is that you can doodle? <laughs> um, and it does seem to be universal truth. So um, that was the US Navy pilots uh, doing, doing this one recently. And who here went to the laser meet last week uh, in the Netherlands? Ah, I I understand there might have been similar <laughs> images in laser display on the wall. So yeah, and actually I was asking someone in the bar the other day um, here to forward me one of the pictures of these uh, laser displayed penises, and um, he, uh, he he must have thought I was a bit mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yeah, so anyway, Yuri at the back, I gather, was bored at this meeting, sort of doodling away, and uh, he was called out. Oh, Yuri, what are you what are you drawing? And um, he's a quick thinker, you've got to give him that. Because apparently what, what happened was... Uh, uh, new water tower design! <laughs> and uh, apparently the, um, the chap leading the meeting came over. Look. <laughs> you know what this looks like, do you, Yuri? <laughs> this is perfect! <laughs> Because we will tell the Latvian people, you know, we will show them that they are well and truly f friends <laughs> with Mother Russia. And we will build many of these all over the countryside. And uh, we don't need any other designs, this is the one. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's a true story, but uh, it's a good story anyway. Um, and the designer there was this, this chap, Juris Skelbergs. Um, and actually he's a very famous Latvian designer. Um, he must be now in his 90s or something, I'd love to meet him. Um, but he built many other concrete buildings, and I, I guess same here. You must have had that sort of 60s, 70s modernist style of buildings. But the thing is, a lot of them now are being pulled apart um, and replaced by more modern buildings. We even think of all the concrete buildings as concrete monstrosities, and you know, just I mean, they're designed for a certain life. So municipal buildings, schools, and things are replaced by newer glass buildings. And I wonder in you know, in 30, 40 years' time, will people look back and say, oh, those glass monstrosities are awful, and whatever they're being replaced by then. You know, we think of those as being modern, but will will people in future? So it, so actually, the water towers are probably his legacy, because the the other buildings are disappearing um, and being replaced by more modern urban architecture. So probably the water towers is what's going to, what's going to remain. So yeah, so there's me up at the top of the tower with radio. <laughs> Um, actually, I must say, on the radio side, I've got respect for those little little radio sets because if you, by the time you've lugged radios, antennas, lead acid batteries up to the top, um, gone up and down, you're, it's good exercise anyway. Put it that way. Um, so yeah, we've we've done that. Um, so yeah, we ran a amateur station from the top. Um, actually, I took part in a documentary about water towers as well. There was a couple in the States from Oregon who were doing a documentary on water towers, so we went over and did a bit of filming and stuff with them. Um, and um, actually, yeah, you think of, of America as being very progressive, don't you? And actually, yeah. you know, it's like Colorado is probably, Colorado is probably freer with cannabis and stuff than it is here now, isn't it? Or I, I think, or you know, the Americans like the tax. 
But um, actually, interesting in 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 uh, Oregon, where they came from, it's illegal to fill your own car with petrol. Um, you have to go to a service station, and someone fills it up for you and gives you a bill. Uh, so in the land of the free, you can't fill your own car. <laughs> you know, whereas we're used to now in England, you you know you have the automatic machines where there's nobody there at all. You put your card and you pay, and so I don't know, sort of. I, don't know, I guess the unions are strong there. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's just interesting learning about different things in different parts of the world. So yeah, um, we've been experimenting with music in the tower as well. Oh, we're doing okay for time. And yeah, one of the things we found is that actually being a sort of big resonant structure, you don't need a big speaker to fill the place with music. And it, it works really well. So we found um, actually one of my neighbours at uh, uh, my office is a chap called Jem Finer, um, who used to be in the Pogues and playing the fiddle, so the sort of fairy tale of New York and all that stuff. But he now has a project called Long Player, which is a piece of music. Um, so it runs at Trinity Boy Wharf in London, where I am, and elsewhere. And it's a piece of music that won't repeat in a thousand years. Um, it's sort of algorithmically generated. And we, yeah, we, we, we've got a setup for the tower so that you can you can play it there, and I'm just trying to sort out the electricity and things like that at the moment. And then yeah, you, know, you can actually set it so that from outside the tower you can you can hear it really clearly. It's as if the tower is singing. Um, but yeah, making up this list of things to do with the tower, we're sort of slowly getting through stuff. So yeah, um, and again, music in the tower. Is it, how, how many people here have got uh, one of those Alexa devices, or are you all too paranoid for that? Who, who, who's got one? A couple, a few people, yeah. So one of the games I like to play with Alexa is say Alexa play and then a random word, um, and just about any word there is a song about it, and it's um, a good way of you know even ones you never think of. I don't know, sort of like you know Alexa play lemon jelly. You know that's the name of a band. They're quite good, and if you do Alexa play Water Tower, um, it comes up with Aesop Rock and various uh, sort of like grungy eight bit music and all sorts of good stuff, um, and. Um, yeah, there's uh, anyway, lots lots to do. Um, yeah, so we've now got a door on the tower after 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 party policy. So we've still got a, a policy of um, yeah, anyone's welcome to visit if they want. But uh, you just got to tell me that you've uh, made peace with God and got life insurance and uh, you know take take your own risks. Um, but yeah, so I'll give give you the door code if you want. But, Um, if you fall from the tower, am I responsible? I'd feel a bit bad about it, but... Um, More from the legal point of view, right? Sorry? In the UK, you'd be definitely... Yeah, and in America, your family would sue me, but I mean, in... <laughs> uh, yeah, so my understanding is if you, if you go to Latvia and fall off the tower, um, yeah, I'd feel bad about it, but there's probably not... It's, it's a bit... They're fairly common, it's fairly common sense, so... Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would feel bad about it though. So, <laughs> but actually, one one of the things. Yeah. So we got this list of 101 things to do with the water tower, and um, and 101 ways to kill, kill yourself in the water tower. So one of them is, um, yeah, you know, you could be romantic. It's not far off. Uh, February the 14th and Valentine's Day here. So, but you know, some, somebody might want to get uh, people who got engaged at the top of Watertown. Why not get married at the top of the Watertown as well? You know, you have a small thing and a good excuse not to invite too many people. Um, and uh, if it doesn't work out, you can go back and uh, oh, quickie divorce. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend that though, actually. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, we've done lots of learning and thinking um, and. Thinking actually, what can what can you do with a tower? And yeah, I've got my so we've got these sort of two lists of things going on, and I mean there are all sorts of things you can do. So we can uh, so for example, we could turn it into the ultimate Airbnb in that um, yeah, why not turn it into a house? And um, you know uh, oh yeah, so after this, I'm off to the flamethrower workshop. So um, because one of the things I want to do is put a flamethrower up at the top because you can see the water tower as you fly in and um, you know out of the aircraft cockpit. And all pilots know Morse code, so it'd be nice to say hello or something else from that. Um, and uh, sort of, you know, why not have a bit of flame coming from the top of the tower? And then people would look at the top of the tower. <laughs> um, but actually, and that's led on to something else, in that um, if you think about flames and beacons, so, you know, what's the world, what's, what's, the, most, what's the most famous Olympic flame? Oh, what's the most Olymp uh, famous flame? It's the Olympic flame. 
Um, and there's also a movement to, to introduce the Baltic Olympics around 2040 or 2045 or something with Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia all teaming up. And that, that, that'd be great. So, yeah, but anyway, we've got all these different things plan to do and basically think of it as a, as a blank canvas. There are some things that have opportunity costs if you do them, you don't do other things. Um, again, I mean, it's like you could actually flood the whole thing and use it as a submarine escape training tower, because those are generally about 40 metres high, and learning how to escape from a submarine if you ever need to. Um, so well, actually, interestingly, m most of the old submarines that had escape hatches, they got welded shut. Um, in wartime, because what people found was if you had a... Sorry, I like submarines. Uh, <laughs> that would be my ultimate house, or that's my aesthetic anyway. If you drop a depth, depth charge down and it goes off near a submarine, it basically causes an expansion bubble and stuff, and that was causing the emergency escape hatches to pop open, flood the submarine, and everyone dies. Um, so for safety, they welded shut the escape hatches. But um, I think more modern submarines, they're back in service again, and depth charges, yeah, sort of... Anyway... Sorry, I digress. <laughs> I do that a lot. So, yeah, I've been thinking about all these things to do with the tower, and um, I'd be curious for ideas, because it's a blank canvas, and it's available for, you can do music things and arts and science and turn it into different things, and uh, we're sort of yeah, experimenting with that. And I like the whole process of working out, can we do this, and it's like, how many records can you break with the tower, and all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, so we've been doing lots of thinking. What's that going on? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, and then yeah. So, so yeah. What's left to do with the tower? So, um, yeah. One well, we've got to reverse the shrinking beam. <laughs> so, that's one of those um, like Taj Mahal type pictures where you just put it in different perspective. So, um, yeah, it'd be fun to break some records and yeah, light some fires on the top and all that. And um, yeah, at the moment there's practical things like trying to get electricity to it. And I quite like the idea of putting solar panels on the side or a wind generator up at the top. Because with the height, you do get a fair bit of wind. Um, but the bureaucracy involved of getting an electricity supply is uh, is something else. <laughs> and learning how all that works. Um, and yeah, so sort of do that long player thing. Um, and yeah, gen generally it's a project to have a bit of fun with, and um, it's been quite a learning experience as well. Actually, lo last time I went there, the uh, shed at the bottom, which um, yeah, my, one of our neighbours uh, with the warehouse next door to it, they had appropriated it and changed the locks, and um, we had a sort of big argument about it, and they were claiming <laughs> that they'd bought it, and I, I, I'm pretty confident I had, because I had, <laughs> but if you don't know the native nor, um, I wasn't quite confident enough not to risk going to Latvian jail and given that policemen have guns and stuff, didn't want to risk that. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, this is my ongoing project, um, looking at things to do with the tower and doing some of them. If anyone has any ideas, welcome welcome those. And uh, if you want to visit us in, uh, in Latvia and uh, sort of 20 minutes from the centre. And, uh, yeah, actually... These are good Latvian technology as well. They, they're, they're made in, made in Riga. So, uh, yeah, Latvian, Latvian stuff everywhere. Christmas trees come from Latvia. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? So, oh, yeah, here we are. Hello? Yes. Do you have any ideas for what happens, in, what you want to do inside of the um, actual tank balls at the top of the So, yeah, um, there's a few things you can do with it. Um, we could fill it with water. Um, and again, there's things like, can you actually use it to store power and store electricity by pumping water to the top and then running it through a turbine? Or can you have a, a big salt battery up at the top? Um, or actually, if you have water in it, you can also dispose of dead bodies in it. Um, the, uh, and these, these are things that have done. So you, you, know, you research all these things. Um, they had that in America um, a few years ago where someone may have fallen in to a water tank or may have been put in there um, and the you know if a body's in water for a certain amount of time all any evidence of anything disappears and the water starts to taste funny which is how they caught it but um, anyway <laughs> sorry I digress um, what was the question to do with the tank um, yeah so I mean again you could use it as things like simple things like a geocache which might be a fun thing um, actually, that seems to have gone out of fashion a bit, but uh, sort of geocaching and stuff. I suppose we've all got advanced GPSs, so it's less trivial now. Um, 
but yeah, potentially it's, it's quite a big area, and the scale of it um, potentially they could be opened up and actually converted into space you can walk around and use more usefully. It's, it is quite thin, so I've got a design for a house as well, where you've got you know twelve different tiny rooms. So there's enough room to lie down, and you know I like the idea of efficiency for space, um, like a bit like the design of the inside of a boat or something, and uh, sort of having services and. Somewhere to sleep, somewhere to cook, somewhere to do different things. Um, so yeah, okay. Uh, so you can put forty cubic meters of water in. So I mean, they're they're not huge as far as some towers go. It's more about sort of storage and balancing the pressure out in in this case. But um, yeah, big enough to be useful for something. So you wouldn't want them to fall on your head either. <laughs> but, uh, um, so. Do you plan on upgrading the oh. um, the ladders? Um, so at the moment they are they're in good state. I mean there's a bit of surface corrosion, but actually I've taken um taken sanding paper and all the metal it's good industrial sort of high carbon steel and you take away the surface corrosion and you've got nice shiny metal underneath there. So it's it's pretty sturdy. But to make the space useful, the ladders do at the moment take most of the space in the centre of the tower. If you wanted to use that space for something else, I'd probably move the the ladder to be against one of the end walls, and you could then put floors in mm -hmm. um, and use the space much more usefully. So, but right now, yeah, they serve the purpose for getting to the top, and there's enough room to move around. Um, and yeah, I was given a challenge by one of my cousins of, yeah, you know, how many members of the Latvian Symphony Orchestra could you get into the tower? And yeah, you know, quite a few, is, but you'd have to be a bit careful not to fall off or <laughs> something. Uh, did yeah. you plan on putting maybe an elevator or, or some sort? Um, there's not really enough room to put an elevator in. I mean, you could put something in, perhaps, but that would then take most of the room, mm -hmm. use of the space. I meant more for goods, maybe, to get it up the tower. Ah, oh, right, so actually what I've done generally is just sort of put a rope over the edge and tie it at the bottom and lift a bucket right. or lift something up that way, um, which which works pretty well. Great. So, Thank you. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um did you get any insights from authorities at your home or there that you bought a water tower as a random person? Or? They, they, they were curious for what to do with it. But actually, I mean, in England we have grand designs and stuff, and I don't think that's got to Latvia yet. No. Um, so because, yeah, people convert them to houses and, and all that. This, this one's an awkward shape. So, yeah. But I think it could be converted, but it's, it's just trying to work, work out what to do with it. So that's, yeah, that's the current plan. So yeah, um, any, other, any other questions? Oh, so I've got one over here. Should we check the... Uh, yeah. no, no. Oh, okay. Oops! <laughs> Sorry. Maybe you could uh, uh, make an uh, external elevator on the other side. Yeah, possibly. Um, you have to be careful about... I suppose, yeah, if it was close in, it wouldn't have too much turning effect. Actually, up at the top, um, you do notice that a bit like very tall buildings it does wobble a little bit but it's designed to do that um, and I guess the fact that the water isn't in there sort of probably encourages it more because it's lighter but yeah you could but why not use the ladders keep yourself fit it's uh, <laughs> that's been my thinking it's uh, it's cheaper and it's better for you so uh, yeah uh, the tanks yeah. are those concrete or steel? they're steel so all the pipe work and the ladders they're steel and it's just the outside that's concrete the modular so yeah, cool. Um, any other any other questions? No, oh, no. Okay, cool. I'm off to learn how to do flamethrowers, so you might see those at the top soon. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. Sorry. Okay. Oops, sorry.